Good day. We have functional range conditioning into internal strength for tissue specificity training of the shoulder external rotation. And we're going to start off with some spine work before we get into shoulders. So what we'll begin with, if you have a yoga block, I'll show you a number of other ways if you don't, to set up our level two lumbar spine flexion extension. Here I'm a little wide in the knees. I'm going to get down on the forearms and my chest can rest nicely right here on the yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, literally anything can work. As you can see here, I'm using my medicine ball. Using a bench and being on your hands is perfectly fine too, as long as your lumbar spine and your pelvis is exposed off the edge of the bench. And lastly, you can be on your hands without the level two block on your thoracic spine. Just make sure that here we want to consciously block the thoracic spine as we move through our lumbar spine and our sacrum. Okay, now that we have our setup, we can begin by articulating, aiming to move through each of the vertebrae of our lumbar spine and our sacrum, which we'll call our tailbone. And here I have some lumbar flexion. And then I'm going to rock back slowly through into extension. Now for a lot of you, this is going to be a micro movement, very small motion. Here as I move through my end range of extension, I do feel like I'm using a little bit of my mid to upper back. So I want to be mindful of that, not compensating through the thoracic spine. And if you do, it's not the end of the world, right? But to gain better control here, we want to be able to just isolate the motion through the lumbar spine and your pelvis. So here, my pelvis is anteriorly tilting as I move through lumbar extension. And then I'm going to transition my pelvis into a posterior tilt, trying to gain lumbar flexion, which is another way of saying trying to stretch the stuff in your lower back. And then here I'm contracting and squeezing the tissue now shortening, if you will, that tissue in my lower back. On the counter side, stretching my abdominals. And then really to move into flexion, you're contracting your abdominals, right? Almost like a micro or miniature type of crunch. So we're going to recommend 90 seconds working up to two minute plus sets. A little longer duration here. The point of this input is to not build fatigue, but to build a little more capacity. So certainly the goal to begin here, if indeed you do need more lumbar motion, would be to just increase the duration of your set or reps the more often you do these. Okay, now we're going to put it all together in that we've isolated the lumbar spine and pelvis, and now we're going to globally move our spine through flexion and then into extension, a la maybe what they might call a cat camel or a cat-cow, um, which we'll just call quadrupedal spine flexion and extension articulation. So I also want to layer on intensity. So here you can imagine as your hands are into the ground, placed right underneath your shoulders, I almost want to corkscrew my hands into the ground, kind of rotating them out away from one another. Okay. I could also do that with my knees, knees being placed right under your hips. By doing that, you should feel some level of irradiation. We're all familiar with irradiation from our morning cars routine. And in that routine, we would often start off with about 30 or so percent intensity. Now I want you to give me a good 50% intensity. Okay, so my entire system and body is contracting at 50%. For most of us, that should be a little bit of shaking. As you know, the old saying, if you're not shaking, you are faking. Okay, so we've increased muscle voluntary contraction, 50 or so percent. Now I'm going to, just like we had prior, move through again that pelvis and lumbar spine and a much higher intensity. And then I'm going to bypass that stuff and start getting up into my thoracic vertebrae of my mid-back. Continuing to flex the pelvis, low back, mid back, working my way up into my upper back of my thoracic spine. As I move through my thoracic spine, eventually my neck is going to start to flex. 
bringing my chin right into my chest, flexing as much as you can, hold your end range, and then we'll repeat it just reversing the direction again, coming from the lower back. Pelvis and lower back or lumbar spine moving through your mid to upper back of your thoracic spine, keeping that 50 plus, if you want, percent intensity or irradiation. Upper back coming into your cervical spine of your neck. And then we have extension of the spine. Keep that 50%. If you'd like, increase to 60 or 70% intensity. And let's move through it again. Flexion, beginning with our sacrum, our tailbone, pelvis, get lumbar spine, working our way through the mid back of the thoracic and upper back, thoracic vertebrae or spine. Cervical spine, neck comes last. Max out in cervical flexion. And then in the end range here, we can hold and squeeze. Continue to corkscrew your hands and knees into the ground. Hold that end range for three seconds. Two, one. And then we're reversing again from that pelvis. Low back. Body and tissue temperature is definitely increasing here as we're moving through this at a 50 to 70% intensity. Again, if you're not shaking, you're faking. So you have to multitask, irradiate while moving through each vertebrae of your spine. Hold extension for three, two, one. Okay, getting into our shoulder training as an option, we can take two tennis ball, one tennis ball or none. The idea with the tennis ball or anything else that you can get to imitate the tennis ball is just to grip and grab so that we can again irradiate, okay? So for our scapular cars, assuming you have done your morning cars routine, you have done some warm up or 30% or so cars, we're gonna again layer on some intensity with one arm out, slightly abducted, maybe 30 or so degrees. Out in front of me, I'm going to begin my scapular cars, but layering on that same 50 or so percent of radiation, I will reach my shoulder, I will pull it up towards my ear, I will pull it back and down, and I will repeat. Okay, so we have protraction of the scapula reaching forward, elevation as the shoulder comes up towards your ear, retraction, and then depression, bringing it back down. We'll continue to repeat that direction. If you wanna layer on a little bit more squeeze of the tennis ball and whole body irradiation to upward around 60 or 70%. And then we'll switch directions. Being mindful to not move or compensate through other parts. As you notice, I keep my arm parallel to the ground the entire time. I'm not bending at the elbow. I am not dipping my neck or head or ear towards my shoulder, rather bringing my shoulder up towards my ear. When again, I am in elevation. Careful that you're not arching from the spine or laterally flexing or rotating from the spine. And we've brought some awareness and blood flow, some afferent, efferent feedback into the scap. Okay, we will switch sides. Of course, on a 30 degree angle, squeezing a little tighter maybe on the non-moving side so that we keep everything nice and contracted. 50% muscle voluntary contraction or irradiation. Just to layer on more of that, remember how we corkscrewed our hands and knees into the ground? I can certainly be doing that with my feet right now, creating or bottling up more tension in the lower body throughout the trunk and the spine, not compensating through our scapular cars, just moving our scap. Switching directions, 50 to 70% intensity. Again, increasing tissue temperature, heart rate. If indeed scapular cars or spine cars that we were moving earlier 
we're giving you any trouble or if you can't actually move where you're intending to move then other inputs may need to follow like building more workspace for now again the focus is on shoulder so getting into the shoulder or the glenohumeral joint as we know it we will reverse back to the first side let's keep whole body tension and irradiation here what i want to do is i want to show my forearm to the front or facing you in that I've already begun to externally rotate in the shoulder because that's where our focus is today, right? The shoulder external rotation. So as I keep a radiation and I'm reaching across, adducting my uh, shoulder, reaching across my body, I'm now going to bring the arm right over my head into flexion. When you hit a roadblock here, I want you now to begin to internally rotate. As you internally rotate that shoulder and you bring it out to the side, abduction and then behind you into extension you're continuously trying to internally rotate that shoulder so much that your knuckles are going to face your hips okay watch that the elbow is not bending extend that shoulder back now we're going to begin to externally rotate right countering internal rotation keep that 50 percent body tension bring that arm right over your head as you start coming across your body, externally rotate that shoulder more, 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 okay? Repeat, keep that whole body tension so we don't compensate. Nice and stiff, nice and still like a statue. Not allowing your body to rotate, just the shoulder. Internal rotation back, wrapping it around into extension. I'm gonna give you a side view here. Knuckles face your hip. An extension, I want to reach back until I can't reach back anymore. You hit a roadblock there, you begin to externally rotate. Externally rotate as you bring it up into flexion. Flexion, remember as we're cutting across our body, we want to continuously externally rotate and bring it down slow. Work through all millimeters of range of motion. I often see people just drop their arm here. Okay, switching sides. Deep breath in. Just another way of just saying pack air into your body, hold that, irradiate. Obviously, you can breathe throughout this, but your breath is maybe more shallow breath. Okay? Keeping the whole body contracted. 50 or so percent, much more intense, right? Than morning cars routine. Internally rotate as you wrap back into extension. Knuckles face your hip. Reach back into extension externally rotate when you hit that extension roadblock abducting bringing your arm out to the side bringing it over your head into shoulder flexion cutting across your body and externally rotating as we go down nice and smooth if you need to reset with a breath deep breath radiate contract repeat rep two i often prescribe duration in a class setting, or just simply if people don't wanna to have to think so much about counting reps, they could just keep the clock going. I think definitely here at this pace, at this intensity, two to four reps, we'll keep it two today. Maybe you're increasing a rep each session, three next time, four the time after, because you wanna to continue to build capacity here, right? So I think again, between 90 second to two minute sets is gonna give you that rep range. Um, that's great for getting more afferent, efferent shoulder, um, which is just another way of saying that mind, connective tissue, muscle connection that we have, afferent, efferent feedback, convincing our nervous system so that we can keep our tissue and our joint integrity the more we age. Okay, for shoulder external rotation, we would need either a TRX strap, maybe a, a ring, which I'm going to use, or you could simply use a belt, right? Attach it around somewhere secure, and it's just the quickest, most efficient way that I like to train external rotation, but certainly I can provide you with other options as well, okay? So for here, I'm going to take the ring, I'm going to walk out in that I have my arm out 90 degrees and the more I walk out the more I'm going to get more external rotation of my humerus relative to my shoulder. I like to stagger my stance with the lead leg of the same arm that I'm training okay and again I'm going to start at a 90 degree elbow angle but that's not to say that you can't bend it more or extend it more 
Uh, it's not to say that you can't turn your body more and stretch out your tissue kind of here in the anterior side of your shoulder. Whatever the stretch is that speaks to you the most, we want to hold that position. Now we're going to hold it for two minutes because we want to bypass what's called the stretch reflex, okay? That's just convincing our nervous system so that we can get better quality work here when we expand this workspace of our shoulder external rotation, okay? So this is input one in the internal strength model of expanding more workspace and how we're gonna to need to do that here again, hold this two minute passive stretch. Deep breathing would be reinforced here, maybe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Watch for compensations, arching and leaning or bending to the side, rib cage flaring out. I have another hand, so I like to hold my rib cage down so I'm not compensating through that. Uh, again, to expand more workspace, uh, we need to train at a high intensity. Now, if you're new to this, you're not gonna go max effort today, that's fine. Choose your safest intensity. Um, if you have been training this, as you know, when we expand a joint via some input one of the FRS internal strength model, it requires a high degree of intensity or absolute strength training, okay? Because it's not just mobility we're training here, it is strength training as well. Okay, so in external rotation, I'm gonna strengthen that tissue by doing a pales contraction, which is, don't come out of the stretch, but I'm gonna show you, you're gonna internally rotate, pushing into the ring, in my case, which is an immovable object, right? We want that immovable object. We want that overcoming isometric, if you will. So here, we'll do a practice rep of pales, and then when we rails, we're gonna do the opposite, right? We're gonna to try to externally rotate back further. There might not be any movement. There probably shouldn't be if you are in your end range, but if we do get a little bit of slack on the strap, I'm okay with that. Okay, practice rep will go about 30 to 40% intensity. First, we need to irradiate. Deep breath, pack air into the system, begin to pales, rotating forward. Six, five, at 30 to 40% intensity. Three, two, one. Now rails, try to externally rotate back. 30, 40%, five, four, three, two, one. Freeze, relax, don't come out of position. Maybe, in fact, get a little bit more into external rotation. Even practice reps, your nervous system will allow you to get a little bit more temporary range of motion. Okay, so let's use that. Okay, we're in a deeper passive stretch. We're going to go now more of a trainable rep. I'm going to suggest 50 to 70% intensity. Okay, deep breath in. Begin to pales. Go. Six, five, four. If you're not shaking, you're faking two, one, rails. Same intensity, rotate back more externally. Don't cheat and rotate or bend your body. Three, two, one, relax. See if you can move into that a little bit more, okay? If you're new to this, again, 70, 80% might be a great place to start, assuming your shoulder's healthy. If you wanna get more long-lasting changes here, we're gonna need to train this at a higher intensity. Deep breath in, irradiate, greatest, safest effort. Go, six, five, four, three, two, one, rails. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax, good. Hey, that could be a great place for you to start if you are attempting to get your greatest, safest effort, my question here would be, did you? Did you train this at max effort? If not, you might want to proceed and do another rep. Again, if you're new at this, this might be a great place for you to start, okay? So you can watch here as I'm going to keep quiet and not count because I want to, in fact, show you, the viewers, what max effort or my greatest, safest effort might look like, okay? <sighs> right? A lot of shaking there. A lot of muscle voluntary contraction. Okay, that will be our pales rails for external rotation left shoulder, if indeed that's where you needed to expand more workspace. If it's right shoulder, you can pause the video and go ahead and proceed with this entire 
theme of again pails rails two minute passive stretch pails then rails into some practice reps and then go get yourself a very high intensity trainable rep okay there's lots of other end range training options that we can complement with our shoulder external rotation training however we're going to get back into our controlled articular rotations and we're gonna do what is called an input five in the internal strength model. They use the term inputs instead of exercises or sets or reps. We're gonna go based off of duration here. So I have my clock set and to target slow twitch muscle fiber, not to failure will be an input five. Basically this is gonna be us starting off if we're new to this in and around 90 seconds to two minutes in duration of a set. Um, what you want to watch for because we're trying to train this tissue for more capacity so the progression could be leading into two minute plus or longer duration sets to indeed build more capacity of the slow twitch muscle in and around our shoulder um, but what we're going to want to do is make sure that we don't go to failure for an input five um, and that would simply mean within your shoulder car the longer you do it you're gonna notice that your shoulder car might get smaller, right? You're no longer in your end range of your shoulder car, okay? That would mean then that you most likely failed at your end range tissue. That stuff fatigued so much that it turned off, basically it fails, and now you're using other lines of tissue. Nothing wrong with that. However, we wanna actually not fail. We wanna stay within our end range of our shoulder car and again, progressively loading that for now with more longer duration reps or sets in training sessions to come, okay? So I'm gonna use a small five pound club here. You could use a small weight as well if you're advanced or experienced with this. We might also wanna use a little bit of weight. Please check your ego though if you're new to this. You don't need more weight. As I mentioned, your goal is longer duration the more you do this, um, but Maybe we're looking at getting more or laying more muscle tissue down there. In that case, it might be an input seven that we're using, okay? So slow twitch muscle two failure, okay? Now, not to confuse you, again, if you're new, stay with an input five, do what you can. Once it starts to feel like there's fatigue coming in, you can pull back, the set is done. If you're not new and you wanna expand more capacity, you've been doing this, you could use load, or of course, uh, if we do wanna tell our brain to lay more muscle tissue down on our shoulder, then we gotta do that stuff to failure, okay? So that would be an input seven. So pick your poison or choose your adventure. Also, I'm gonna go level two, which means I'm gonna hug my squat rack. I'm gonna irradiate at a solid 50 to 70%. And let's begin, the clock is going on our shoulder car, whether it's loaded or unloaded. And we're keeping 50 to 70% intensity. We're going to move through the entirety of our shoulder car, trying to capitalize that end range tissue. Be mindful of what that feels like because the longer the set goes, you're going to eventually start skipping out of those end ranges. And then that might, might be a time to pull back on the set. If indeed your goal is to increase more capacity and you just want your shoulder to be healthy. If indeed you're trying to lay more muscle tissue down, because we're moving, it's dynamic, we're biasing muscle versus our isometrics and our pales rails that we did earlier are gonna bias more connective tissue. So we have slow twitch and fast twitch muscle, right? Right now we're targeting either slow twitch muscle, not to failure, I'm still able to stay in those end ranges. We're a minute in. If I wanted to train slow twitch muscle to failure, because I want to build more muscle around my shoulder, then certainly you're going to notice your shoulder cars are going to get smaller and you're no longer in your end range. And you can continue the set until you no longer can, because it needs to be to failure. 50 to 70% intensity, don't stop irradiating. We're a minute and a half in. Some of you might be done the set. That might be enough for you for today. Okay, at a minute and a half, maybe your goal next time is two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes. There's nothing wrong with staying in an input five and just trying to build more capacity, which is another way of saying do more work for a longer period of time. Never a bad thing. 
If I want to lay more muscle down, I might need to load it next time, stay within that 90 seconds to two minutes, and train it to failure. Okay, we'll save what fast twitch inputs and training might look like for another time. Two plus minutes in. Again, if you're done here, you might want to pause the set or the video and do your other shoulder, of course. Train that other shoulder with the same input. I'm going to go one more rep. Again, for me, it's looking like an input five right now. I'm still in those end ranges. Watch for compensations. If you're compensating, you're not in your end ranges anymore, right? Nice and slow down, working through all that range of motion. And there is almost a three minute set, okay? I think I was pretty good in staying and carving out my end range and not spitting out of those ranges. Again, if you did, it's not the end of the world, guys. Um, I hope this helps you in that, again, for someone that may need more shoulder external rotation, I might begin by moving the joint, getting it to open up more, a la more workspace in the joint via our pales rails, and then after all that connective tissue training, while well, we want to get into some more muscular based training. So shoulder cars could be a great way. Remember, your cars put you in the entirety of how your joints move, rather than biasing exercises. However, you could certainly use exercises, maybe I want to put more tissue down on the front side or anterior side of my shoulder, uh, push-up set within the same parameters of what we were just talking about with slow twitch, input training for your shoulder, maybe I want to do that for the posterior side of my shoulder, all your classic exercises like your rows, different versions of flies, all the external exercises could work within this model, but it is our deepest tissue first, blending out into superficial tissue, which is another way of saying our deepest connective tissue into, which is white in color, into our red muscular based tissue training, then therefore secondary. Okay, hope that helps. That was internal strength training for shoulder external rotation.